Just need a volunteer to read that again. Does anybody want to read that? Um, let's get one. Uh, sure. Here you go. Go ahead and read that for us. You want to just hold that? There you go. Uh, so we're reading Matthew chapter 14. Those of you that have your Bibles, follow along. It's going to be very similar to what we just watched, but sometimes it's a little different when we read it. All right, go ahead, Jeff. Tetrarch, the ruler of one quarter of the kingdom of the Father, Herod the Great. Uh, I'm sorry, is, verse is 13. Correct? I'm sorry, oh. <laughs> verse 13. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. When Jesus received this news, he withdrew from there in a boat by himself to a deserted place. But when the people learned of it, they followed him on foot from towns, from the towns. When he came ashore and saw the vast crowd, he had compassion on them and healed those who were sick. When evening approached, the disciples came up to him and said, This is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the people away now so that they can go to the villages to buy some food for themselves. Jesus replied, There is no need for them to depart. Give them something to eat yourselves. But they answered, All we have here are five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. Then they gathered up the fragments that were left over, 12 full baskets. And those who had eaten numbered about 5,000 men in addition to women and children. Ooh, man. Does anybody, like, did anybody see what happened there? Uh, there's an amazing thing that happened when there was a major need, a major want, and what was the problem? There wasn't enough right there wasn't enough materially physically they were hungry they had been traveling they've been following jesus and we all have physical needs right how many of you have ever felt like man i don't know if i'm gonna have enough to make it just for today anybody really feel that way um, Don, um, we all have physical needs, right? We have need for food. We have needs for shelter. We have needs for a bathroom. <laughs> uh, so how many of you worry about that on a, maybe on a daily basis? You don't know where your next meal is coming from. You don't know how you're going to pay your bills. You don't know. Uh, you name it, you know, all, whatever you're worried about. How many of you are living, are maybe paycheck to paycheck? You don't know where the next thing's come from. Does anybody want to comment on that? Monica, go ahead and. I, I'm ending laryngitis, so, but. Not right this minute, but last year was the first year of retirement early, and they under some, for some mistake they said I owed them back like four thousand dollars, so they docked me the first like six or eight months. So literally, it was not enough to meet any of my bills. And God had said just to me, this is something strange, but do not work for money this whole year. Then all that happened. But then money just started pouring in. Like one was, I gave 60% of my liver to my nephew, and that sister, and I lost like $5,000 worth of sick days that would have paid back $5,000. And so my sister's mother in law died. She goes, I'm going to give you $5,000. So, like, that lasted me, you know, like five or seven months. And so that big miracle like that, just kept happening and happening that year that he said, do not work for money this year. So I, I was in shock. It was beautiful how God provided. Yeah, so let's be clear here. This is what we would call a miracle. 
So, who here believes in miracles? Anybody believe in a miracle? Um, so I just want to be totally clear what a miracle is. <laughs> a miracle is something that is supernatural in occurrence. It is not of the normal course of events, okay? So what you saw here, what you saw Jesus do, and what you just read about is what we call a miracle. What was the miracle that took place? Does anybody want to talk about what that was? Uh, well, there was another miracle that took place. And so does anybody, can anybody tell me what the miracle was here that happened? Go ahead and skip. I think it was, uh, when, you can just when, hold on to that if you want. Yeah. I think it was when they, the, the fellas realized the baskets were being filled. And yeah. Because they were in doubt. You know, you could see it in their face, you know, where Jesus was going to get the food to feed them. Yeah. Well, and the next thing you know, poof, you know, it's, it was there for them. Yeah, so the miracle is there wasn't enough food. I think the miracle was when the food got to them. You know Absolutely. I mean? Before. Like, we don't know when it took place. Uh, nobody knows, like, exactly how that... But the the bottom line was there was only enough food for a few people, right? Okay. Not for 5,000 people, right? And so the fact that it, it just was multiplied, right? That is uh, what we would call a, a total miracle. And so, does anybody think this still happens today? Does, like, um, yeah, there's a woman that I admire her ministry. She's in Zimbabwe, in Africa, and she does ministry. Her name's Heidi Baker. And she has a beautiful ministry and she ministers to the poor. And on many occasions, this miracle, the same miracle that Jesus performed 2,000 years ago is still happening amongst his believers. She's given account, given testimony of several times that she didn't have enough to feed her people that she just did not have the physical means the material means the money to buy the food for the people but yet somehow when they start distributing the food there's enough right and i want you to uh, this is really important for you because uh don't look to the right, don't look to the left, but I want you to raise your hand if you worry, if you are actually worrying about how you're going to provide for yourself. And be honest, like I'm, I do that a lot. Like be honest, raise your hand if you, if you don't worry, that's good. But if you are really worrying about, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I just don't know how I'm going to get by. Je Jesus is trying to tell us something here. He's trying to tell us that he has enough for you. There's also an important thing uh, I want to talk to you about. And it's this reality that there's more to life than just food, right? Yeah, go ahead. Je Where's the Jeff's back there? There's more to life than just food. There's Jesus is pointing to something greater here. And what is that, Jeff? I, I want to make one uh, statement that's very close to home, actually, in this very house. Last week, when we were serving uh, the food, yeah, we were running out of food. Yes. When we were serving the food. Yes. But somehow. As we were sitting there watching, 
food kept appearing while we were sitting there. I will vouch to that. Yeah, food kept appearing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It was kind of like Chinese food. It was growing. While we're sitting there, just kept getting there, kept getting there. So every time, so I started dumping more food out on people's plates, and I still had more coming out. So I was dead even more, and I was putting extras. And so the Lord does those miracles at all times. And there are times that he does these miracles that we do not pay attention to and we do not watch. Yeah, I experience them all the time. Well, so it's I just pretty to amazing. That. We've been doing this event for four years now or more, right? Michaela's been here from many of the years, and you can probably testify. You want to get? <laughs> you can probably testify to the fact. Okay, uh, over here. Uh, you can probably we can testify to the fact Mary's been here for many of these events somehow like it just we we always have enough right we always and sometimes it's down to like the last person like somehow the the last person comes at like some crazy time at night and somehow there's enough for them too and um yeah you were gonna say over here go ahead and uh, Okay, um, I was just going to say that I've, I've had a lot of times where um, I always need something and we always need something and uh, there's always a time in someone's life where they feel like they need something and um, what's got me through a lot of times is we all have miracles that every time the Lord provides food for us every single day is a miracle. Um, you know, a roof over our head, not the fact that we're all still living is a huge miracle. Yeah. We all know we've had like, um, you know, short times in our life where we're like, I know I should have died. I know I should have died. I know I should have yeah. died. Every single one of us, cars are like one of the biggest um, places to get damaged at. Yeah. Um, and we've all, all avoided a car. <laughs> and, um, and I was going to say, and... I don't know where it is in the Bible, but it says no matter what, he is still good. He is still good. And so there's going to be a tomorrow. There's going to be a tomorrow or whatever. Heaven is manifesting out of us. It's not a place we're going to, you know. It's That's a good point. You know, uh, I forget your name again. Uh, Joy? Joy. Okay. So uh, Joy makes a good point that heaven... That's a that's what a miracle is. It's when heaven comes down to earth. And when we pray the Our Father, what do we say? Our Father, who art in heaven. Give us stay our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass. Our Father, who art in heaven. Give us our daily bread and forgive our trespasses. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver from evil. This is what we say. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. The kingdom of heaven come to earth. Do you pray? We pray that prayer every day, right? If you're a Christian, you probably pray that prayer every day. Thy kingdom that is in heaven come to earth. And when we pray that prayer, do you think there's enough in heaven? (laughs) There's definitely enough in heaven. Like... Anything that you lack, Jesus has an answer for. He has a whole... What was he saying in that... He was alluding to that in the thing when he was talking about... Uh, go, the, if you find a treasure in a field, go and sell what you have and buy that field, right? Does anybody understand what he means by that? Anybody understand that? Go ahead. Again. Yeah, yeah, this one is really important. Um, and it's sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. But someone can gain the whole wide world and lose their soul. What is more important yes. is the world or your soul? The world or your soul? You will not be if you lose your soul. So why would you want a field if you, if you, you won't even want the field anymore? There will be nothing left of you to want a field even in the first place. 
So the treasure is who? Jesus. The treasure is Jesus. The treasure is what he has to offer. And what, is, what does he have to offer you? Redemption. Redemption. Uh, what does redemption mean? Uh, uh, that we're washed completely white and brand new. Brand new. So we're brand new. Think of like yourself being completely reborn. Like that's what happens when you die is you get completely reborn and then you're a new person. That old person is dead. You become a new creation. So Jesus offers you a treasure that is so great. It's better than any treasure on this earth, any value. So you have a choice to... Uh, you know, you can go with your own life and keep worrying like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to make it on my own. I'm going to just work harder and do this. And, you know, if I just try harder, then I'll make it. Or you can go and sell, get rid of that life, go sell it, get rid of it, and buy that treasure of Jesus. Like, He's your everything. And guess what? When you have Jesus, you have everything, right? You don't, nobody can ever take that away from you. They can put you in prison. They can persecute you, but they can't take eternal life from you, right? And so we're just going to end with a little prayer here because I want you to really pray for this. I want you to pray to trust Jesus to provide for you. This the what we're talking about here is is very real. Jesus wants to pro- he doesn't want to just have you live this miserable life and then one day like after you're done with this miserable life then we'll go to heaven then everything will be better. Yes, that's true. But Jesus wants you to know that your kingdom, experience of the kingdom of heaven can start right now. Just like it did for those people that didn't have enough. If you're thinking, I don't have enough, I don't know how I'm going to make it tomorrow. I don't have the strength. I don't, I don't have the energy. I don't. I can't deal with this anymore. He has more than enough for you. So we're going to say this prayer, okay? Everybody close your eyes. And and just say, Jesus, you are my treasure. Jesus, you are my treasure. And I want you to maybe hold your hands out like this. And cup your hands like this. And just imagine all that other stuff that's besides Jesus that you're worried about in your life. Whatever that is. And I want you to imagine yourself selling that to somebody. (laughs) Just being like, you can take this junk. I don't need it. And just, you can just give that over to whoever wants it. (laughs) Even the things that are good in your life that you can't let go of. That you think, oh, I have to hold on to this because, you know, if I lose this, then I won't have anything. Let it go. Some of you have to let go of some things that maybe that's a relationship in your life. Uh, Maybe that's an addiction that you have to let go of. You just have to say, no, I don't want this anymore. I I want Jesus. Maybe it's uh, division in your life. You have fights with people and you always have to be the one who's right or your own opinion. Give that away. Sell it away. You don't need that anymore. Maybe it's hatred in your heart. You can get rid of that. Sell it away. Get it it out of here. 
maybe it's I just don't know how to trust people you can sell that you can get rid of that anything else you can think of just get rid of that and then you can just say Jesus I trust you just say that Jesus, Jesus I, trust I trust you, you. And I trust you to provide for me. And I trust you to provide for me. Now just take just another moment and let him show you how he wants to provide for you. Sometimes we just have to let him provide for us. He wants to give you so much. He wants to give you not only the material things, but he wants to give you spiritual things too. Peace, joy, happiness, gentleness, kindness. The ability to get through trials. Spiritual strength. And then we'll just end just by saying thank you. Just, to your, just on your own, just say in your own words as you speak to him, just thank him for the way he provides for you. And we just say thank you, Jesus. We thank you that you are enough.